When I turn out the lights on this orange mushroom, it glows in the dark. Aristotle first wrote about this, and he called this glowing in the forest foxfire. It describes a light that's cool to the touch. We're gonna see if these glow. We're gonna take them back to the studio. He was describing bioluminescence. And I should note, this is an amazing mushroom that can help us treat cancers, but also don't eat it. It's poisonous. This is a mushroom I think everybody needs to know about. It's called the jack-o'-lantern mushroom. This bright orange mushroom really stands out in the field that I found it in. It's not nearly as famous as the red one with white spots, but it is tremendously cool. It's a bright mushroom and it has medicinal benefits, and it's definitely a mushroom you'll want to learn more about. I was pretty excited yesterday when I first found it. Incredible. I've never seen this many in my whole life. It's the biggest patch of poisonous mushrooms I've ever come across. They usually grow on decaying wood. And if you can see behind me, I have a big old stump. This stump has been dying, so the roots of this big tree must head out like this. Oh, Are we gonna bring this home? that thing's so heavy. Look at that. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about the toxins. So Leo right now is holding the jack-o'-lantern. It's poisonous but he's not going to eat it. If he doesn't eat it, it's not a big problem. He doesn't have to worry about it. You can clean your, wash your hands later, but you're gonna be okay. The point is the toxins inside of here are not gonna soak in through your skin. It's important to know though, that these toxins are very stable, very heat resistant. So if you cook it, it's not gonna matter. Now let's just say Leo ate one. Well, he'd know because he'd have some serious gastrointestinal problems a couple hours later. Vomiting, diarrhea, nausea, that's because this mushroom contains eludins, highly toxic sesquiterpines. Eludins work by alkylating DNA, which damages the genetic material of cells and can lead to cell death. As it turns out, they're particularly effective at killing cancer cells that are resistant to other cancer treatments. Elidin S seems to be effective against pancreatic cancer, lung cancer, and breast cancer, and elidin M for leukemia, lymphoma, and multiple myeloma. So again, don't go eating this mushroom. I feel like I need to say that over and over again. You see the compound that's targeting those cancer cells, if you ate it, would just kill all the other cells around. So researchers are trying to figure out how to get that toxin specifically to the cancer cells. They're also tweaking this compound a little bit to make it a little bit more effective. So they're using the template that already exists here in these wild mushrooms. And with that, there seems to be real promise at treating cancer. One small note here, the reason that you need to know the jack-o'-lantern, if you are a mushroom person, is that they look superficially like an edible chanterelle, and lots of people forage for chanterelles. Got a whole bunch of golden chanterelles. Here's a chanterelle. In Swedish terms, this is the chanterelle. Tell me if you can see the difference between that chanterelle and this jack-o'-lantern. If you can't immediately see the difference, then you have to be wary looking for chanterelles. I'll give you a hint. Those right there on the chanterelle are not gills. Those are actually folds. This jack-o'-lantern mushroom though, does have tons and tons of very thin, fine gills that run down the stem. So that, that is the one thing they have in common is they run down the stem. They're also this bright orange color. And the other really good orange mushroom, I think it looks somewhat similar to as it grows, is chicken of the woods. So don't make that mistake. Just to clarify, this is one of many species of jack-o'-lantern mushrooms. This is the Eastern American jack-o'-lantern, but what I'm telling you here is going to be similar across all of the different species. They are all poisonous, so don't eat them. And most of them have the ability to glow in the dark, just like this one. So let's get to bioluminescence. Now in the dark, when your eyes have adjusted, you can actually see this mushroom glow. It's, it's impressive, it's a green color. But the problem is that it's really hard for me to show you that with these cameras. That's why I'm here taking some time-lapse photography of the mushroom. What I think you notice first is that around the gills, that's where you see it glowing. It's not glowing here on the stems. And that gives us one possible explanation. It attracts forest critters. Those insects crawl around, pick up the spores, they go to dead wood, potentially where they're either digging and boring into, or they are just crawling around there as well. And those spores then drop off, the mycelium will start infesting that wood, and eventually then it completes the cycle. And that allows this to distribute itself across the forest. Now let's dive into the chemistry of specifically what's happening inside. It's a reaction between luciferin and oxygen. That requires energy and the enzyme luciferase. 
This excites an electron in the molecule, and when that electron releases its energy and drops back to its normal state, that energy is released as light. And it's one of the most efficient ways that we know of creating light. Unfortunately, it's not super bright here, but just to compare this light efficiency, uh, a light bulb like this often emits heat and light. So a lot of that energy is going into the heat. That's why if you touch these bulbs, they're really hot at times. So a mushroom like this, that's a little bit different. It's cool light. It is the Fox fire that Aristotle wrote about so long ago. So there you have it, just in time for Halloween, popping up in the forest is this jack-o'-lantern mushroom. If you've come across one, I wanna hear it down in the comments below. Tell me where, and if you've seen that glow. Remember, you have to get it in a dark situation and you have to let your eyes adjust to it. I've been teaching my kids all about this. They've been helping me film. So a big thank you to my family and my wife, Haley. Uh, also, a big thanks to all of the patrons out there who were helping support this educational comment, providing rough cut feedback and providing some extra support so that I can spend more time making this content the right way. I think that's important. Remember to get out there in the forest and understand as much as you can. I think we're much healthier, much happier if we are connected to this forest. And this is one you wanna make sure you don't eat. And we'll see you in the next one. If you like that mushroom video, I suggest you watch this one next.